So I'm going to go quickly through the timeline, because even though I think probably the knights people don't care about, they are relevant to the more juicy Ben issue, and I will bracket Season 7, because Season 7 is important at the end, and I will bring that in. But I will concentrate mainly on Seasons 1 to 5. So, from the testimony of the Watchers, we can estimate they've been around at least since 800. They would have to predate the Knights, and we'll put aside the Knights don't really operate like that in the Empire. Assume that the Order of Dagon and the Knights arose together, and they split. I think it's a legit assumption that the Watchers, being the Watchers, they probably have a few spies and kept tabs on the Knights and the Monks, at least a little bit, and that's why they have the information they have to give to Buffy, but they don't know all the details. They just know the basic gist, because they don't really tell her that much. They tell her the basic big gist, which is, he's a demon god. And we can also make the obvious assumption that they are in Sunnydale periodically. They probably send spies or just people to look at what's going on. They get a synopsis, maybe every couple of weeks, couple of months, and they track everything because these people don't care about privacy. They do keep track of Buffy's sexual history, who she's with, Jow's immigration status, right with Xander and Willow up to, and they have assassins, so they have no issue with killing people, even killing innocent people. And that gets us to the Benish. People think the Knights ruined season five. Yeah, the Knights create problems, but Ben is the issue, and not the way people think. So what is the problem with Ben? Well, there are many, many problems in terms of lack of consistency with the character, conveniences and contrivances, and why he did what he did in Spiral, why he even showed up, etc, etc, etc. Probably the main issue, which a lot of people probably don't think about, is his age. Because it is believable that somehow Glory and the Minions, when chasing the key in the late 90s, just slipped through, right? Because if the Watchers are there in Sunnydale, the Minions are in Sunnydale. So it could be they got lucky, they somehow were not noticed or detected, at least initially, that's fine. We can assume the Watchers know a few things, but they're not all-knowing, they're not all-powerful. They do have limits on resources. But that leaves us with the Ben paradox, because the question is, when did Ben show up in Sunnydale? In terms of the early season, it appears late 90s, early 2000s. At the end of the season, they do give us a canonical age, and they say, oh, he's 25 years old. That cannot be correct, because people immediately say, ah, you don't really know Buffy because there's a spell, and they don't know that. No, 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 that does not matter. That does not matter because of the minions. The minions are not affected by the spell. People can see the minions. The minions are not invisible. So unless the Watchers are complete morons, they're going to notice the minions. They're going to notice the minions keep congregating around this guy. Now, you can believe for a couple of years, because they're concentrating on the Slayer, right? There's a lot of apocalypses. There's the Hellmouth, there's Buffy. Okay, their attention is focused there, but they do report things beyond Buffy. They clearly know things about the Buffy inner circle and a few other people. They would notice the minions. Glory's around for several decades, right from the 70s to the 90s. They're going to notice the minions eventually, and not just them. Wolfram and Hart should also notice the minions. So you can believe that Ben sort of had Glory in his body, but Glory did not emerge, perhaps, until the 90s, right? In other words, Glory is in his body, but she didn't really break out until maybe the early 90s. So he led a somewhat normal life, but then eventually Glory emerged. We still have too many problems, because as a human being, he's going to be shadowed by the minions, and that's something persistent. He acknowledges this saying, Glory's like a sister. He knows the minions. He's familiar with the routine. He knows he's immune. They can't kill him, so he knows the basics with the minions. So how does he know this? He has to be with them for more than a few years to realize, oh, okay, this is Glory, this is you, this is your role, that's her role, etc., etc. So I would have to say, for the story to make sense, his canonical age is really in the 90s. In other words, Ben is like Dawn. He was constructed for Glory and was technically born in the 90s. Still a decade, but I can believe the Watchers, even for 10 years, were not totally keeping tabs on Glory. That's possible. But 25 years? That's a long time. And Travers, yes, they do make mistakes. They are arrogant. They don't know everything. Because with Season 7, they're not totally up on the first. However, Season 7 establishes they're ancient. So they've been around for thousands of years. They have to know a few things. You can't make the Watchers that stupid. Otherwise, they don't mean anything. They're not real characters. They're not a real organization. So we have to allow the Watchers 
to have some competence. You can't tell me for 25 years they didn't notice something. Like all these minions in Sunnydale, they're independent of even the vampires. They have their own army. And then the knights show up, they're going to notice a few things and be like, okay, all these minions keep gathering around this person. Glory, like, like she disappears, but then this guy appears. They're going to put it together. So something does not add up. So I would have to say that Ben as a vessel probably got bonded to Glory in the early 90s, but she asserted herself physically in the late 90s, and that would make sense with the story. But that's not what we're told. It seems like we just have two different Bens in Season 5, but they don't tell us why there are two different Bens. There are just two different versions of Ben, and we go from an early version to a later version, and it's probably that production-wise, they didn't know that Buffy would continue, so they had one idea of Ben, but they didn't keep track of him, and so they just created all these details that don't match the early version of Ben that we get in the early part of the season. So I think that's probably the only way out of it, but that's not what we're told. We're told he's kind of born normal and was bonded to glory at birth, I guess, but even that we don't know for sure. So at the end of the day, yeah, the Knights are a little bit of a headache, but really Ben is the real problem. We just don't know what Ben is. Is Ben human? Was Ben born like a normal human? When did the bonding happen? How did it happen? When did he become aware of the minions? There's just a lot of questions, and the information they give us is all over the place. We just don't know that much about Ben, and what we do know does not make any sense. It's a bit of a tragedy, and I think them just adding all these restrictions made things a lot worse. It just seems so complicated, and at the end of the day, what is Ben? We really don't know anything about Ben, and that's where we stand.